So topic of today is DMR for amateur radio. Just by curiosity, how many people have already set up DMR? Okay, very good. My hope is to kind of give you an overview. There's tons of great videos on YouTube that will go into extreme detail on like how to set up a Pi Star hotspot, how to set up your AnyTone radio, et cetera. But I think this will give you a good overview of kind of what it is. So we'll talk about what is DMR. I'll give you some DMR success stories that I've had success with. This was really kind of my first digital mode I got into, so it's a little near and dear to my heart. We'll look at some of the repeater coverage. Uh, spoiler alert, it's great. Um, we'll talk about some nets that might be an easy way to get in there once you get your equipment set up to test. And there's a fun surprise at the end brought to you by AI. So what is DMR? Uh, DMR was originally created for commercial use in Europe. It was created for interoperability between different manufacturers, Motorola, Hytera, Kenwood, Icom, and a couple others. And what does that really mean? It wasn't really intended for amateur radio. It was intended to get public service radios to be able to talk between different um, uh, manufacturers. According to Wikipedia, it came to us in 2014. That's when we started using amateur uh, DMR. Whether that's true or not, I'll believe Wikipedia, I suppose. Um, and the idea of this system was to create digital radio with low complexity, low cost, and the interoperability standards. I know you guys are thinking it's complex. It's really not. I promise after this, you'll think this is a piece of cake. Um, again, it was designed for commercial use. Most of the repeaters out there are Moto Turbo, which is a Motorola uh, product. So if you hear Turbo Network, that's DMR. So how does it work? DMR uses one 12 and a half kilohertz channel and uses TDMA technology to take that one frequency and divide it into two. At each time slot, it's a 30 millisecond spot and it keeps flipping back and forth. Our ears aren't fast enough to know the difference and it sounds like it's normal radio to us. Um, there are three different tiers of DMR. When I got my first radio, I was trying to figure out which one we needed. Um, at the end of the day, all amateur radio is tier two. Tier three is for conventional trunking systems, which is something we'll probably never do. And tier one, to my understanding, isn't really used anymore. So um, the picture on the screen kind of shows how that flip works. So think of that as one frequency. Uh, talk group one might be W cares, talk group two might be um, Davidson cares or D cares, and it just flips back and forth. So it allows that one channel to have, or one frequency to have two different time slots. If I'm going too fast or anything, just let me know. <laughs> I see the tension, which is good. Um, most of the DMR is connected through the internet. Brandmeister is probably the most common way that happens, although there's other networks as well, like TGIF, Free DMR, and there's a lot of others that have been created. Um, most of the repeaters in Middle Tennessee are on Brandmeister. If you hear on the m -tiers network, people are going to talk group 31472 or something, that's Brandmeister. Um, our W cares talk groups are on Brandmeister, so generally speaking, I've kind of stuck with Brandmeister. However, feel free to play with the other ones as well. Um, Hotspots are probably one of the most common ways people are connecting on DMR, just in my experience. Um, there's a couple out there. There's a Pi Star version, which uses an MMDVM board on top to give it the radio capability. There's also an open spot, which seems to have a lot of popularity. Um, I was on the radio, I think it was Monday night, Tuesday night, some night this week, and um, there was a truck driver on the radio who had a hotspot in his truck connected to a cell phone, and he was on Brandmeister just chatting around as he drove down the interstate. Um, so it's a, it's a mode that you can easily take portable with you. If you're in the car, you can use your phone as a hotspot, and boom, you have Brandmeister in your car. The other way, of course, to connect is through repeaters, and we'll get to the repeater section in a couple of slides, but our repeater coverage is amazing here. So if you're not already started, what does it take to get started? Um, this picture up here is DMR radios. The one on the far right that says Radioddity on the top is about $75 when I was looking around yesterday at what's an inexpensive DMR radio. Um, as you get towards the left, I think they get a hair more expensive. I'm a big fan of AnyTone. Um, that's what my first DMR radio was. I think if you're looking for code plugs out there, and there's lots of good code plugs on our site, on Stone, Stone River Amateur Radio Club site, P pick a uh, geographic area and I'm sure you'll find some code plugs. Um, they're probably the most common, but again, you can get started pretty inexpensively. There's also the ability to do DMR on a mobile device. And I know if you have an Android, you can get an app called Droidstar. I've heard you can get that to work on iOS. I've not tried, so 
you want to experiment, um, have fun with that. But it's another way you can connect into the network without even a radio if you wanted to. Um, there's a couple of things you can do to get the radio programmed. I will say the AnyTone feels more like a commercial radio to me. Programming it is painful from the front panel. Excruciating, I might even say. Um, but it does come with software where you can program it on a computer. That comes with it. Um, <clears throat> but again, cheating and getting a good code plug to put in your radio to get 98% of the settings right is the best way to go. Uh, you will need a DMR ID to get started. You get that at radioid.net. You put in your ham information and typically in a day or two it comes back. But it assigns you a number and that number is your um, radio ID identifier in DMR. So there are a lot of people who have DMR IDs and one thing that it doesn't really bother me but just something to be mindful of, each radio will only hold a certain number of contacts I think we're over 50,000. I don't know what the number is, but some high number. So older radios won't hold all the contacts if you want to download them. And what does that mean? That means that if you pick up the radio and you connect to DMR, if your contacts are loaded, it uses that DMR ID number and it can translate it to KO4 DNR, Will Daughtry, Spring Hill, Tennessee. If it's not programmed with that contact, it's just going to tell me 316785 or whatever my number is, is calling you. So it's almost like a way to cheat, uh, not cheat, but see who's talking just from the digital data without having to actually hear who it was. Does that make sense? It all makes sense in my head, but sometimes I wonder. <laughs> um, let's see. One other thing to mention here, anyone can do DMR. It's typically on the 70 centimeter band. It's sometimes on the two meter band, but that is something that a technician class can get into. So setting up DMR channels, um, there's a couple terms I just want to throw out here that I think will help. They sound scary, but I promise they're not. Um, setting up DMR, typically you put channels into a zone, and really that's just a list of channels. So as you pick the zone, your channel knob then is spinning through whatever channels those are. Scan list, um, unlike some analog radios like my Yesu, where you can hit scan, it just goes through all the whatever's program, it just goes through. In the world of DMR, typically you have to apply channels into a list for it to scan. Not a huge deal. Um, admit criteria. This would be great if analog had this, especially for nets. What this will do is allow you to prevent yourself from keying up if someone else is already talking. Your radio will say channel busy. Um, you can turn this on, you can turn it off. Um, it, it's, per, it's user settings, but again, I think it does help with doubling a little bit. Um, and contact list, we talked about that. That's where you can download that DMR ID so you can automatically translate what ID is calling you and what their call sign is. On the left side here is a picture of what it looks like for one channel. I picked a random channel. Um, but you'll see the settings are typical of what you would probably do in an analog radio. The receive, the transmit frequency, um, what power level, all that should be pretty similar. There's no tones in this particular channel. Um, but if you look under digital, the one thing that did pop up is there is a place to put your color code um, underneath the contact there. And color codes are like CT, CSS tones. They tell the repeater that you are trying to contact it and it'll open it up. If you have the wrong color code, you can transmit, but it's not gonna make it to the to DMR system. All this making sense? I uh, touched a minute ago on hotspots. They're probably the, one of the more common ways um, to access the system. One neat thing about hotspots is it is getting a lot of data. As you're keying up the radio, you're going to your hotspot, your hotspot's going to a Brandmeister server, then it's rebroadcasting it to wherever else is listening. And from the um, hotspot, you can see some data that it collects along the way. So there's one thing there called loss, and that typically is a sign that the internet connection is not strong with the hotspot, is the most common thing that would cause that. Or bit error rate, and that basically means your um, radio is not perfectly aligned with the frequency of the hotspot. Sometimes it's helpful to know what those stats are, because if you're seeing loss, then the other person's probably not getting most of your transmission, especially if it's high loss. Um, but even though these people obviously weren't all connected to my hotspot, it does give me the stats of their communication as well. 
So if you're talking with someone and it's all garbled, if you look and their loss is 20%, it's probably on their side. If their loss is not 20%, it's probably on your side. Um, and again, these similar dashboards for um, open spot, this happens to be a Pi dashboard here. Code plugs, I've kind of tried to hammer this home, but I'll do it again. Don't uh, start with a base code plug. That's just not helpful. Definitely go to WCARES or other amateur radio groups homepages and find yourself a code plug to start from. When you do that, you can kind of cheat in these <laughs> channels and go back and see what other people have that are working and compare and contrast what might not be working in a new channel. Uh, my first code plug did come from Stones River. It was before I even knew WCARES existed. Um, and they've kept theirs updated. We have an updated code plug as well. Um, if code plugs are sometimes radio specific, so again, any tone seems to be a common radio that most people are using. But if you find a Hytera or some other brand and want to get a code plug, um, just ask around. If you're in a Slack group, that's a great place to ask. Um, or you can still search the web, of course, and find stuff. So Middle Tennessee coverage for DMR, I've had great success with just this HT all over Williamson County talking on DMR, mostly through the Nolensville um, DMR site. I live in the north side of Spring Hill. I drove from Spring Hill almost to the Wilson County Fairgrounds and had connection to the Nolensville repeater on the handheld. I couldn't find any quick data to throw in the PowerPoint, but there is a theory I heard at one time that because the digital frequency is smaller um, on the 12 and a half kilohertz, it can get a little bit farther than potentially analog. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But again, my experience from Spring Hill to Wilson County on HT for DMR was pretty impressive to me. This came directly from um, the Brandmeister webpage. It shows the repeaters that it has listed. I feel like there might be a couple missing, um, but nonetheless, we do have really good coverage. Um, we have a DMR repeater right here on Century Court. There's a DMR repeater in Cool Springs. There's a DMR repeater in Franklin, Nashville, Lebanon. There's a brand new repeater on Music Mountain. So I would venture to guess most people in this room with an HT can hit a DMR repeater from their house. Most. Um, trying to kind of elaborate a little bit more on some of these terms. Color codes, again, is like a CT CSS tone you put to make sure your radio can communicate with the repeater. There is a tone or a color code also on a hotspot. My experience is very often that it's color code one. That's probably a pretty good guess. Um, if it's not, it'll probably be listed wherever you found the repeater information. Talk groups, um, that's how we determine what goes on what time slot. So your frequency, is the RF to the tower. Your color code is the tone to get you in. And then the talk group is how it knows who you're talking to and where to rebroadcast it. Can you do data on DMR? Technically, yes. Uh, you can do digital APRS on DMR. I've had success doing that on my hotspot. I always forget to turn it on when I'm on a repeater, so I don't know if that works. Um, in general, you transmit APRS through a talk group in North America, it's 310999. If for some reason you're using a different Brandmeister server other than North America, then it's the first two digits of that 0999. Um, but it definitely does work. Um, I know a lot of the newer any tones, you can transmit a message. This radio will just transmit my location and that's pretty much it. Um, but it's neat to know that it works. So let's talk about a real world example of why you might want to get into this crazy uh, hobby with color codes and talk groups and time slots and oh my. So in 2021, I was still a freshly new ham and I took my equipment on a road trip to my parents' house in upstate New York. And I got there and I had my hotspot, I had my Anytone radio and I had my nephews there who were 13 and 15 at the time. And I said, hey, how far do you think I can talk on this thing? And of course, their guess was like 10 miles or something. So I turned on the talk group 91, which is a worldwide talk group. If you ever listen to that, you'll hear people all over the planet. It's almost always got a lot of traffic. And somebody was just finishing up a QSO, which is perfect. So I keyed up and I gave my call sign. And I said, 
I'm doing a demo for my nephews. Is anyone able to give me a radio check? And sure enough, I had Croatia, someone in Dutch Harbor, Alaska, driving a boat, I guess, someone in Scotland. I think there might have been one or two others, but my nephew's eyes, and I think they're deadly, deadly as catch fans, maybe that's why, but when they heard Dutch Harbor, like, lit up, and they were like, wow, this is so cool. So um, that's one of my favorite DMR moments. Um, again, the chance of me getting them on HF from my parents' house, probably not super high, if I had the right antenna maybe, but all from a hotspot and a DMR radio, it was pretty neat. Um, as you're going through the process, there's a couple of nets I figured I'd mention. Um, Friday night is a Tennessee statewide net. It's on talk group 3147 at 8 p.m. It's a great group of folks. There is a lot of conversation outside of DMR, not just DMR. So we talked about APRS, WinLink, last night was logging, or EQ, EQ, uh, E cards. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Um, the net controls for that. I happen to be one of the net controls for that, so a shameless plug. <laughs> um, but anyway, lots of, lots of great folks. It's a good way to test and play with your equipment. Also, Thursday night at 7 p.m., Kentucky Statewide has a net on 3121. I'm also a net control there. Um, <laughs> but great, there's a lot of nets out there. I mean, these are just a couple. If you scroll through Facebook, you can find a bunch. Another thing to mention is, um, I think it was this last Monday, but it could have been the Monday before, when there was a out, repeater out scenario in West Tennessee, we used talk group 31472 to take check-in. So there are some good alternate use cases for DMR if you'd like. Um, 31478 is a talk group that MTiers when active, lots of times will put out messages about what they're on. So again, that's another good thing to know. And if you're somewhere else and you wanna know what's going on here, you, as long as you have an internet connection, you can probably get there. A couple other helpful talk groups to know, 9990 is Parrot, and what Parrot does is you transmit whatever you'd like, and it sends it exactly back to you as a recording. So it's a good way to test your equipment. The one thing about Parrot that I'll mention, if you're on a repeater, you can listen in DMR in something called promiscuous mode, and that means you hear everything that goes on to that frequency, regardless of the talk group. Um, so if you're using Parrot on a repeater, just know that someone might be listening to whatever you're saying. It's not really a private talk group. Um, some other common groups that have a lot of traffic, 3100 is called Nationwide. There's always somebody on there. I think of it similar to America Link for any of you Fusion folks out there. And then Worldwide 91 is also a giant talk group with people just chatting all the time. A little trick that we learned and tested and works really well is if you want to talk with a couple people but don't necessarily want to use a more well-known talk group, you can use your radio DMR ID as a talk group and as long as you and all your friends have that same talk group programmed, you can talk in between each other but not through a published talk group. Again, if you're using a repeater in promiscuous mode, yeah, no, nothing in amateur radio is encrypted or should be by, by the rules. Um, let's see here, a couple other tips I thought might be helpful. Um, as you think about the frequency that goes to the tower with two different time slots, if you call out on WCARES, you know exactly who that person is. There's one frequency, they're definitely on the analog system, you can call back. If you're calling on DMR, you may not be on the right talk group, but you can still hear the other person's transmission. So my recommendation is, instead of just calling out your call sign, say this is KO4DNR on Worldwide 91, or this is KO4DNR on TEMA 31478, something like that, so people who are monitoring know where you're actually calling. Does that make sense? Uh, let's see. One other thing to mention um, on repeaters specifically, I think it's generally not a, um, recommended thing to open the wide talk groups on a repeater, like worldwide, nationwide. Um, there is a ton of traffic, and that repeater will just be blasting out RF forever. Um, so just keep that in mind. I, I don't think you can't do it, but I would probably recommend not always using worldwide or nationwide on a repeater, or anything else that ends in wide, really. Um, another kind of quirk of DMR is, 
As you're listening to a channel, you cannot change the channel until you can key up. So if someone is talking and talking and talking and they finally stop, but the next person keys right up and starts talking and talking and talking, you're kind of captive. So my other recommendation is as you're having QSOs, let the system rest for a second or two between transmissions so anyone who wants to exit the talk group can. That's kind of a minor Achilles heel of um, switching the talk groups. And I think I missed this in an earlier slide, but one other thing to mention is um, repeaters have talk groups. Sometimes they can be static, which means they never change. In most cases, the repeaters around here have 31478 on a static talk group, or they could be dynamic. And that means you can make that talk group whatever you want. As soon as you key up the number, it'll change it to that talk group. Um, so as you're programming, you want to be aware of that. So here's my fun little thing I did. Um, I was playing around getting this presentation together. I was having a lot of fun actually <laughs> doing that. And I was like, I wonder what AI thinks of DMR. And I was like, how could I figure that out if it likes DMR or not? So I went to AI and I gave it some thoughts and I said, can you make a song about DMR? And here we go. So again, this is all from AI. I might've gave it a couple helpful hints, but I thought this was really cool. So I figured I'd share it. In the world of amateurs, we gather round. While our DMR radios adventure is bound, we tune in the frequencies oh so clear, exploring the airwaves from far and near. DMR radio, the joy it brings, connecting with distant lands, the magic it sings. Through the waves we reach across the great divide, in this amateur community, our spirits collide. Through the static and noise, we find our way, making contacts with friends we've yet to meet someday. The thrill of the chase as signals break through, in the world of DMR, there's always something new. So let's embrace the adventure each and every day. With DMR, let's keep the contacts at bay. For in this amateur world, we're never alone. With DMR radio, our connections have grown. <laughs> Compliments of AI. If you want to talk about AI later, that's been my uh, thing I've been diving into. My last thought, um, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. That's a Walt Disney thing. I'm a big fan of that. Um, there's a ton of people out here who are happy to help you with whatever you need. So don't hesitate to reach out for help. Um, and in summary, it's a great way to explore the hobby. If you're a tech, it's a great way to get a little bit of a taste of what some DX contacts can be like. Um, and it's just fun to enjoy. Once you get the code plug, and I think I've said this once before, get a code plug to start as your base, um, everything else will start to fall in place. What questions do we have? So that's a great question. I think there is two things there. Uh, repeat the question. Um, so the other night, Paul went to talk group 31472, but he didn't hear anything. Um, in the world of DMR, as you put your channel to whatever you're talking, you almost generally need to key up to make sure that that talk group slot is set. The other thing that happens, and I really don't like this, but it's just the way it is, on some channels, there's a 10 minute timer. And so as you key up 10 minutes from that period of time, that talk group is going back to nothing. Um, so, Unless you key up again, that's right. So I don't know why that is. I think on the wide channels, Brandmeister's trying to keep some of the rebroadcast down maybe, um, but that could have been why. Um, that's just my best guess. I will also say in the world of hotspots, I think I have this picture here. Oh, that's okay. In the world of hotspots, um, I always look and see if the DMR is green. Ironically, yesterday I had a little bit of an issue and it kept going yellow, like it kept disconnecting. Um, but this will be a good indication too of if things are set right. In this case, um, actually it doesn't really say that, oh yeah, it does at the bottom. My local RF activity was there. So 10 minutes from that period of time, potentially I could have got disconnected. And I feel like that happens more on repeaters than the hotspots for some reason. Um, but definitely there is a, sometimes a 10 minute timer. So I've got a, a Zoom spot which uses the Pi Star. And I've got, I've got a D Star radio. Can I cross mode DMR? 
Um, that, repeat the question. Yep, so the question is, um, somebody has a hotspot and they have a D-star radio, can you cross mode to DMR? Yes. And yes. I, I'm hearing the answer is yes, which I believe. I think it depends on the um, hotspot. I was just looking, I don't, D-star, I don't think I have a D-star no, to DMR. DMR doesn't, doesn't work. Does it work? No. It'll, it'll work for one or the other, but not the yeah. Uh, I think the Kemo one and XDN will work, but this start not. I tried. Okay. I, I don't know how often these things evolve. Um, the only cross moding I've ever tried was Yezu System Fusion to P25, and it did work. And if I remember correctly, there's something about the C4FM protocol that's similar, and I think that might make it a slight difference. Um, but yeah. Any other thoughts or questions? I have a comment in present. Good deal. Just to repeat that, um, the question or the thought was, um, you can do DMR radio to radio or simplex. You do not have to go through a repeater. So creating a channel with Talk Group 99 as a DMR channel will allow you to do that. Because it's a narrower channel, you may have slightly better range than if you're just in an analog um, channel as simplex. All right, any, th any other thoughts, questions? All right, well, thank you all very much.